Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to the channel. And of course, you may know this gentleman, you may not know him, but he's being filmed today on my channel. And we're going to get the information that I'm going to spill about him and Gladys Knight from Billboard.com or Billboard slash dot com. Okay, it's all about Shanga. Yes, Shanga. Bill Hankerson and Gladys Knight's son that they had together. Yeah. And Gladys Knight is tired. You know, she ain't in her uh, younger days. She got more days and for good times behind her than she got in front of her. Okay. Yes, yeah, she's in her late part of her life. All right, still looking good, still sounding good, but tired. And that's Barry Hankerson. And he married Gladys Knight. But did you know that he also was Aaliyah, um, uncle? Yeah, mm hmm, Miss Aaliyah. Talking about age ain't nothing but a number, getting down ain't nothing but a thing. Yes, honey. I there what 13 14 years old singing that song and guess who Mr. Hankerson introduced her to Yep, the Pied Piper and look at him now look at him and look what color he's sporting these days All right, that's all I'm gonna say because Hey It's just something about Hollywood something about the music industry And it's just something about people just gotta love it gotta love it and he was the CEO a black ground records at the time i don't know if it's still out not too much interested in researching it because it's just a part of the story and he's really not a part of the story i'm just giving y'all a background of who shanga hankerson parents was so y'all won't be getting like it's some kind of thug running around there no i'm sure he was raised properly how uh, gladys knight and barry hankerson tried to do the best they could for him but half the time when you put them in hollywood they gonna come out some kind of messed up but i think they did their due diligence on him but he just found meaning her son his son um he found his way of doing things and it wasn't kosher all right and they said um changa hankerson was in um some illicit type substances as well but he was I guess the owner or overseer because I think it was a partnership where Gladys wanted her son to have a business and she was trying to support him and all that kind of stuff sometimes it seemed like he was stuck on that short bus syndrome that's I'm just saying he, he just trying to mean because just hear him talk sometime when he was doing interviews and just the whole thing about him having uh, several restaurant chains with Gladys Knight, his mother, on the cover of everything, trying to help him out, and he's just ruining her name. I'm like, y'all know what? They was a cute couple back then. I bet he was foxy and she was foxy too. You know what I'm saying? They lived good together. Now, what happened? I don't know. That drove them apart from each other. But I know they had a son together and I know that son is in trouble with the law and from what I understand He's gonna be paying and serving some time in a Somebody's population if you get my drill Okay, uh, yeah Billboard put out an article on him and meaning Shanga Hankerson uh, the parents of Barry Hankerson and Gladys Hankerson at the time, even though she was known as Gladys Knight, because she was on her midnight train to Georgia, living on the midnight train, yeah. I wonder did that song come from her splitting from Barry Hankerson, because they spent some time in L.A., and uh, he was a, a music exec, owner of his own um, Black Island Records, so I wonder what he, that was, he was the in, inspiration of her making that song, Midnight Train to Georgia. You know, she said, L.A., prove too much for the man, prove too much for the man. He couldn't make it, so he's leaving it tonight, but he's leaving tonight from a something. He wants to, oh, yes, he did. He said he would, I got to leave him, leave him. Oh, 
I'm leaving with them on the midnight train to Georgia. Yes. That, yeah, get on into it. Same, honey, same. It proved too much for the man. L.A. tore him down. And technically, looking at some of his pictures in his, his uh, older days, he, he don't look good. He looked toe back from the floor. He like he just let life just get the best of him. But you'll see him in some of these uh, clips I have uh, throughout this video. But yeah, how the weird is something else? They tear you up when you get involved with all the parties and the comings and goings and the signing of contracts, shooting blood, sacrifices, all that stuff. Trying to be with the elite because you know, Le Aaliyah had threw up some signs where she did that one eye thing that is so common within the music industry, and they saying, you know. Hey, they're serving another God that, you know, most people don't serve unless they're searching for that fame and glory and all that kind of stuff. And I just have to wonder, you know, did it rub off, you know, by them being in Hollywood in the music industry? Did that take its toll on Shanga and uh, Miss Aaliyah? But it's, I know it's one common denominator in this uh, situation uh, with Aaliyah being hooked up with the people she came across uh which his name is uh the pie piper as we know us r and b uh, we'll say the last name kelly 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 all right and i don't care what nobody say that boy made some good music he made some good ain't nothing wrong with a little bump and grind i see nothing wrong yeah, honey, girl, yeah, oh, honey, you could just go on a trip, and y'all just stop me on a road trip or somewhere. His music, Luther Vandross, Barry White, Marvin Gaye, Michael Jackson, Prince, these are like timeless people that you could go a whole road trip into another state listening to their albums, okay, because they ain't make a record or, you know, these people never slip on their music. They were just cranking them out every time it's time to drop something every month every year or every couple of years you know selling out arenas and stuff and i know for a fact if Aaliyah was still around there would be no beyonce not as not as high as beyonce has climbed and Aaliyah will be sitting on that throne and i know y'all i know y'all say different but y'all can't take away Aaliyah now and beyonce was out at the time when Miss Aaliyah was climbing the charts. And they do have one person. Yeah. They have one person in common. We know Jay-Z. You know what I'm saying? And Jay-Z know he like to hit stuff on Aaliyah. Okay. It's shown in the pictures and everything. Which I don't get it. I don't get it. The same vibe. The same love with him and Beyonce. When you see pictures of them. Even when they're just like out and about. And they just wearing regular clothes like regular people. You don't get that energy. But when he was seen. Okay. When he was seen with Aaliyah. You could see the love. You could see the love. I could see the love. Um, with. Um, what's his name. Uh, Damon Dash when they were dating she was calling him herself liking him I think they were gonna get engaged or whatnot but uh they maybe have gotten engaged shit I don't know but it didn't work out okay and you know hey I think it's some things that wasn't right in that situation as well if you listen to Mary J. Bridge she was telling some truth but we came here to talk about Gladys Knight, Bill, um, Barry Hankerson, son of Shanga. How he don't got off? Yes, Lord. He, you see, he look kind of spacey. And like I said, they were saying he was doing some of that illicit drug stuff. I don't know now. I don't know. Because I'm over here just talking. We just having a conversation. But that's what the streets were saying, okay? That's what the streets were saying. And that's why he couldn't keep those health inspections up on the Gladys Knight chicken and waffles. Because they, you know, had shut them down a couple of times here in Atlanta because it was roach infested and all of that. And I'm like, how you can you, how can you just mess up your mama's name? How can you just mess up your mama's name? And they had Ron Wine's name in there too, but see, Gladys was the headliner. All right, so it's really her. And people were like... Oh, you know, that's her restaurant. Oh, I want to go see it. I want to go do that. I wanna, you know what I'm saying? But it really wasn't. She was just letting her son use her name for advertisement, uh, advertisement, however y'all see that. Um, and just to get people to come, especially big name people. 
uh, in Atlanta to visit and partake and you know make the restaurant a success just like you can't really expect um, Canada to be at the OLG all the time or Blaze or Steak and, Re with steak and Seafood Restaurant it's somebody else running it um, and you know she's not there same thing with Gladys she's not there if she was in town half the time uh, she probably would come and partake or whatever but that was her son business she was letting him make name, uh, money off her name. And it's supposed to be a very, very good lucrative deal for both of them. But mostly for her son. Because Gladys Knight already got her name stamped in the mud and in our hearts and in the music industry. Okay? But it's none of my business. Okay? They be talking about her. But you know, when I find something interesting, I have to come out here and talk to my fam about it. I got to say, you know, what's on my mind. I don't want to talk to myself. Then they try to put me away, you know. But everybody talk to themselves, answer themselves all day long, okay. We don't see nothing wrong with it. It's just the way life is these days. Especially when over came and it took all our socialization um, capabilities to go out and meet and greet and talk with people in person. We couldn't do that anymore. So we had to come in introverts in a sense. But, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the whole situation with Shanga doing what he did ain't paying taxes having roach infested um businesses with his mother's name on it making her look all kinds of crazy and silliness that you know class night ain't never had no filth on her name ain't never had no blemish now her son coming out here acting all kinds of crazy in this uh in these streets in atlanta and doing what he had to do but you know they probably overlooked you know the issue with the inspections and the roach infested uh, um, issues he had with the restaurants and stuff, but they ain't gonna look over no money. Uh uh, the government gotta look over, under, above, on the sideway. They gotta see what you had and if you are trying to hide something, okay. And he was bringing in lots of money because it was a hot hitting type of establishment at the time. But I don't know. He said, I ain't giving, I ain't giving the folk what they think they're going to get. I'm giving them some, but I ain't giving it to them. Because my mom glad it's night. And she don't play that homie. But he don't know. Glad I had to pay taxes too. But like I said, we can train our children. We can love them. We can pray for them. We can instill good values in them. And yet they still may turn a blind eye. And, and, and you know, how I always saw it. Is you have a right side angel, you have a left side angel, and one of them is gonna be telling you to do bad things. The other one is gonna be telling you to do good things all the time. So, in the essence of grand scheme of creation, the Lord gave us free will to choose our destinations and how we flow in this uh, era of life for us on this plane of existence. We have the choice. We make the choice, and we suffer the consequences whenever they decide to knock on our door and say, "Oops, I'm consequence. Let me in," and you know it follows suit to whatever happens to you after that. So he chose the life of you know partying and and, and hanging out and misappropriating funds and not paying attention to his businesses not paying taxes and now he's in public population where well, they shut the doors they tell you where to go when to go how to go when to eat when to do your hygiene checks when to get your exercise you have no free will there you're told what to do and that's the dad of um Shanga Hankerson and his name is um, Barry Hankerson okay and we are getting our news from Billboard all right but they were a foxy couple I can tell you they really was like who that would have been Shaft and uh, Foxy Brown <laughs> you know they were black power back then sporting it real heavy and black love was just something like no other all right but um yeah they were a thing they were married that's mr hankerson and that's gladys knight hankerson uh however she want to put it she's gladys knight now but at the time when they was having that baby boy hankerson uh shango that's what she was and she was known for but you know gladys knight was always her stage name gladys knight gladys knight gladys knight nobody got upset about it because she didn't want to say she's gladys hankerson knight or gladys knight hankerson we don't know how uh, we call it abbreviations and stuff like that it was just hey whatever you are like tina turner 
you know, she uh, got rid of Ike and divorced him, but she kept her stage name. She said, uh-uh, I'm going to be Tina Turner until the day I die, okay? I ain't going to be, um, what was her name? Annabelle, no one, Annabelle. She's like, I don't know what Tina, uh, name was. But she's like, I'm not going back to that. I am going to stay Tina Turner, okay? In this earth, this planet existed, I'm staying Tina Turner. And that's pretty much what Gladys Knight did. She never gave up her stage name, even though, but I think, uh, uh, well, hell, I can't remember. I can't recall. I don't even care about her husband that she's with now. Uh, if she's married. Okay, but going to um, billboard slash com.cdn.amproject.org. Though it is really coming from billboard. I just had to give you their, you know, email address. Not email address, but, you know, where you can reach them. I guess that is the email address or whatever. But it says uh, the Associated Press was on it too. So I guess we have to give Billboard and Associated Press their due of forming this article on Mr. Shanga Hankerson, which is the son of Barry Hankerson and Gladys Knight. All right. They titled it Gladys Knight's son gets prison time over restaurant taxes. Okay. Restaurant taxes. He couldn't pay it, y'all. So he had to get on that midnight train to jail. Living on the midnight train. Yes. I guess it's going to be in L.A. I don't know where they're going to put the boy. But, you know, he may get off in uh, one year. Because I think the sentence was two years. But good behavior can bring a lot. And a lot of people writing, uh, you know, pleas to, you know, this is his first offense and all that kind of stuff. Good behavior. He'll probably get out less than a year. All right. But we can only hope and pray, right? But anyway, it, the article goes on to say the son of R&B legend Gladys Knight has been sentenced to serve two years in prison for failing to withhold payroll taxes from the restaurants that bore his mother's name. Federal prosecutions in Atlanta see it. And I'm like, okay. Some people thought um, Gladys Knight was wrong for turning state evidence over on her son or trying to get her name disassociated with the uh, restaurant when she found out that her son wasn't acting right but you know what child i don't even know if i would have let my daughter use my name you know what i'm saying i would have been like on my social media platforms saying yes you come to you know my daughter's name or whatever she wanted to name the uh restaurant or establishment she was building up uh as an entrepreneur and stuff of that nature i would have financed her did all that but i I wouldn't put my name uh uh nope nope mm -mm. and we like that to this day i believe in her i support her financially uh on her endeavors i believe in her and this that third but mm -mm, no mm -mm. because i don't know who you be hanging out there with who be who you be listening to because you know they always like listen to their friends and you know people they they deem a little bit better than their parents because their parents you know don't want them to live they don't want them to see them succeed they don't like their friends you know how you get until you wise up and you see life for what it is and you start valuing your parents you start valuing the lessons they tried to teach you the pitfalls that they had to go through and the advice they were giving you so you wouldn't have to go through what they did it's almost giving you a leg up as far as experience you see what i'm saying when i'm talking i know y'all hear me y'all better be hearing me because i'm dropping gems okay but going back to the article it says shanger hankerson Opened his first restaurant, Gladys Knight Chicken and Waffles, in Atlanta. Woo woo! Cause she had to come back. Barry Hank I guess Barry Hankerson had to come back on that midnight train to Georgia, cause he couldn't make it in L.A. Yes, but anyway, um, he opened an uh, establishment in Atlanta in 1997. Over the next several years, he opened at at least three more locations in Georgia and Washington, D.C. Hankerson willingly disregarded his tax obligation for many years. Okay? Now, a couple of years. Not one year. He said, or they said, it said, several years. All right. Acting U.S. Attorney Kirk 
Erkenshine said in a new news release during his opening statement Wednesday, Hankerson, who pleaded guilty in July, was ordered to serve a year of supervised release following his prison sentence and to pay more than $1 million in restitution. Now, who y'all think paid that $1 million? Or probably still paying the $1 million. You know that's his parents or more than likely Gladys Knight. Gladys Knight is taking a hit for her son like most parents, good parents, will do. Okay? They, and I know she's mad about him. Ooh, child. But she probably embarrassed. Because I would be embarrassed if my child was in, in, in custody with the law for several years. Yes, and I had to put money on the books and make sure he's being treated right and not being damaged in there socially, physically, mentally. You know, it's just too much. <laughs> but anyway, going back. That wasn't an article. That's just my sidebar. Um, he was the sole owner of the business and was required to withhold payroll taxes from his employees' gross pay. From at least 2012 to 2016, Hakerson failed to remit more than $1 million in payroll taxes, prosecutors said. While ownership of a well-known restaurant in our community has its perks, it also comes with a great responsibility. IRS Criminal Investigation Special Unit Agent in Charge, James Dorsey said. Paying taxes is a way to give back to the community, but unfortunately, Hankerson chose to use those funds for other means. Now, I'm just having a sidebar. I'm having a sidebar. Technically, we don't supposed to be paying taxes. Pa taxes were brought up because we was in a war situation. And once the war was supposed to have been uh dissolved and you know, we need had no need for it no more we weren't supposed to be continue to be paying taxes okay we're supposed to be getting our pay for what we worked for and that's it okay that's it and pay your tithes okay at church if you're a part of those affiliations okay that's the only thing i know but now this world these elites in this world has said taxes and the lord say death or two things we can't expect okay the world say we're gonna pay them taxes and the lord said we're gonna have a taste of deal those are the two things that i know now i got to fall with the ladder because the lord created us so he can definitely put an expiration date when and when and ever he feel like he needs to do so now why these taxes over him that these uh human beings don't create it that's bull that's booty should have been stopped but hey that's the kind of law we live on, on in this type of plane. So we have to pay the piper. Okay. But going back to the article. It said. Um, Night one legal battle to server ties to the business in 2017. See Gladys like uh-uh. That's my son. That's my son. That's my son. I have no earthly idea what he was doing. I was just financing him here and there. But I no, we're not going down and I'm not going down with him and I'm not paying nothing to no taxes of, of his. Okay? So that's what Gladys was pretty much saying. And her son was ordered to stop using her name, yes, likeness, and memorabilia, according to the Atlanta J well, Atlanta Journal Constitution, which is AJC down here, if you live here. Okay. So, you know, at the end and grand scheme of things, Gladys and I said, uh-uh, you got me effed up, boy. I boy, how many pains and hours going through labor with you? I raised you, provided for you, gave you the best, and still believed in you to become an entrepreneur, and this is you pay me. Oh, to the hell, to the no, no, no. Gladys said, nope, where's my lawyer? We finna take all this stuff out of my name, whatever uh, papers I initially signed, take them out. I didn't know about this catastrophe, this mess. I didn't raise this boy like this. He ain't gonna finna do me like this in my old age. And I've been woo woo with the pips here and there, saying on Soul Train and, and Black Lives Matter back then. But I think they was like Black Power back in the day. And I had to go through all this sharecropping. I don't know if her parents were sharecroppers or not. <laughs> I was just going with the flow, y'all. I was just going with the flow. But Glass, I ain't go through all this. I'm an entertainer. I entertain people. I do not wear orange. I do not wear a jumpsuit. And I don't like to be told when to come, how to go, when to eat, when to go to sleep. No, that's not in my um, um, 
style of living I, I didn't do anything wrong for anybody to come at me that way so yes let's do what we got to do you know it all it's in the bible what it said you know daughter would turn against mother mother would turn against daughter father would turn against son yeah it's all in now son would turn against uh father it's a mess it's a mess honey but it's biblical and it's fulfilling but you know like i said maybe it's just a curse um that uh we go through you know since he bit that apple you know we under that law oh, it's just a hot mess but the point was you know he had a choice he chose to you know be devilish and do things that weren't appealing and you know he has to pay the piper now he has to pay for his consequences well pay for his and actions and there are strict and dire consequences and he's facing them so it is what it is. Yeah, I don't see um Clark Knight been working on for a long time. It's probably been working since she was teen. I don't know. With the singing and, and music industry. What I'm saying, then she had to marry this man that pimped out his daughter. I mean his aunt I mean dog gonna his your niece. Yeah, it's honey. But I ain't I am just, just talking. I'm just running my mouth. Don't don't put it to the paper. Uh, it's allegedly <laughs> just speak speaking my opinion. Okay. But y'all uh, shout out to the Jasmine brand for um, using her little clip of uh, Gladys Knight. You know, I just be searching for pictures when I'm trying to talk about a certain uh, person that I'm featuring here on the show. And uh, sometimes bloggers use their uh, name when they're doing videos and just so people could connect um, to them. It's like advertisement over the email. Or the uh, social media wave or platform for YouTube. So when I do use like pictures that I see their names on, I shout them out and let them know, you know, hey, I, you know, I couldn't find them no pictures, so I want to use yours since you don't put your name on everything that's out there. And I do watch these people that I do shout out on my page, and they have good uh, content uh commentary that you probably want to you know research out go over there and catch them a few times on some topics that you may be appealing to you all and just tell them i sent you over there okay because even though i'm a smaller youtuber hey they were a smaller youtuber at one time too so it just is what it is I ain't trying to grow on nobody or anything like that i'm just come over here and talk to my family about things that i felt like is that right, y'all? Is that right? Well, I feel some kind of way about it, so I have to express my opinion. Okay, but that's all I got for this video. We'll keep uh, Gladys Knight in prayer because I know this is not a good thing for her. Nobody wants to see their child locked up, you know. They, we, you know, they be locked up in the bed, but you be nurturing them, you be giving them food, you be singing to them, talking to them, wishing and waiting for that one day for them to be born and stuff. They know your voice because they're inside you. So I know she's going through a lot of emotions um, and pretty much an embarrassment, but it just is what it is. No, no uh, negativity coming towards her from me. Because, you know, I, I can't even imagine, I can't even imagine, you know, my daughter doing some crazy stuff out there. And then I have to face people, more so in my family or whatnot, and try to still defend and, and try to still be loving toward my child. Even though I didn't agree with they what they did. And that's pretty much what she's going through. And the embarrassment and, and people coming, talking about it when, you know, nobody want to talk about that. But, you know, we as human and being nosy and stuff, we always going to go and try to find out more and that's your family that's your friends that's your associates constituents however you want to perceive them and it, you know it's a bad look but hey we're not our children our children are not us uh when they do do good things we say they got the best of us you know uh and they learn from us but when they do bad things we be like okay i don't know where they got that from <laughs> we thought pouring fingers and stuff like that but we are their parents and we just have to you know go through it with them because they're not going through it by themselves so uh, we never stop loving them never stop loving them don't agree with the actions that they take out there when it's going to cause harm to themselves and others uh, uh we just have to keep them in prayer for those who are very prayerful but uh same thing with Aaliyah same thing with R. Kelly you know what I'm saying because uh, we don't know what made him do the things that he did we don't i don't you know i'm not gonna go and research his whole life history but from what i understand you know he can't read 
you know uh that's a developmental flaw that he has so you got to have some empathy now what he did to people you know it could be a product of he is a case of being a product of his environment and how he was raised and nobody took the time to un let him understand this was wrong seek counseling and you know instructional uh uh help for him for him to partake on, on a daily basis weekly basis monthly basis you know but you know we, we can speculate all day long but we are not walking in their shoes so we can't really say how or what has affected them to do the things that they do so you got to have grace you got to have empathy for others even if you don't even you know can understand what they went through because you always walk that straight line you always did you know you followed the letter to the law of how we get down on this earth and you always was you know adhering to everything so you didn't end up on a bad side of things but you know uh life is such and a lot of people get dealt with uh in a very hellacious way and then they grow into adults and they do what they were taught or they know so yeah, you gotta have empathy if nothing else uh but that's all i have for this video guys if you like and love you gotta have more don't hesitate to hit that notification bell so you'll know when i drop videos and you come running over here and partake with me in the conversation because you can do that by leaving your comments but that's all i have for this video and i will see y'all next video peace out